Greetings, comrades. On 18th of February, 1946, almost 76 years ago, a protest by Indian sailors about the HMIS Talwar would spark a rebellion that would prove to be the death knell of the British Empire in India. The core issue, the original issue, was a question of fair treatment at the hands of their British superiors and a decent quality of food that the Indian naval ratings were being denied. Throughout the war, Indian soldiers, Indian naval personnel, Indian military personnel had sacrificed enormously for the British war effort in winning the war against the fascists. Despite this contribution, Indians continued to be treated racially, they continued to be abused, and they continued to be given uh, the position of an inferior within the ranks of the army. It was a question of one's dignity and self-worth. The mutiny that started with the question of food ended with the question of independence. The naval mutineers of 1946, those who had struck against the British Empire boldly, serve as an example for us today, as an inspiration, I would say. Today, where we see strikes and protests by workers across the country, especially among healthcare workers and frontline staff and those who have sacrificed the most during this period of the pandemic. We are seeing uh, mistreatment and abuse and neglect along class lines that almost mimic the old colonial attitude. We can draw inspiration from the mutineers and their struggle against British imperialism because they took that destiny into their own hands. They did not wait for Gandhi and Patel and the Congress party and Jinnah to strike a deal for them. No. These men took the bold action, the bold decision to strike at the empire themselves. During the mutiny, the Congress party, the Muslim League, and all other official leaderships of the Indian independence movement condemned them. Gandhi condemned them. Patel and Jinnah condemned them. They sided with the empire at the most decisive period of the history of India's independence struggle. They were on the wrong side of history. The mutineers did not have the leadership, they did not have the organization because of this betrayal by the Congress party. And they lost that struggle. Despite that, they showed great potential. In Bombay, in Calcutta, in Madras, and in Karachi, th tens of thousands of workers in the textile industry, in the docks, tens of thousands of student youth as well, came out in support of them. The naval mutiny cannot be understood in isolation. It cannot simply be understood as a breakdown of discipline, nor simply as a matter of uh, fixing a few policies within the British military establishment. It needs to be understood in its wider context. India had suffered under colonialism and it was coming to a breaking point. The Red Fort trials, which began in uh, November of 1945, going all the way till May of 1946, coincided with this rebellion. The Red Fort trials had triggered mass mobilizations, an uprising of the youth and the peasantry across the country. It was a time where it seemed that India was truly heading towards a revolution. It would be a democratic revolution of a colonial nation throwing up the shackles of imperialism. True, but a revolution nonetheless. The 
Red Fort trials and the naval mutiny created a condition where it became untenable for the British to continue their rule over India. It more or less made the question of independence and inevitability. And it did two other things. It presented a model of communal harmony within the mutineers themselves. It produced a model of communal unity across religious lines and caste lines. When the INA veterans, the INA soldiers who are Hindu, Muslim and Sikh stood trial before the uh, judges. It presented an alternative to the politics of division, the politics of reaction that the Muslim League and the Congress were bringing. As history went in a direction where we are today, a divided subcontinent where India today has to deal with communal hatred and reaction. In a sense, those people did win, those who sowed those divisions in the past. But in another or deeper sense, it is the mutineers who won, despite losing the immediate struggle of the mutiny. The fact that British imperialism, that colonial establishment was done away with for good. The fact that workers and peasants across the country were electrified and mobilized along with the uh, progressive revolutionary youth. It pushed the bourgeoisie in a direction that it would be forced to concede to them. We received the Nehruvian welfare state. We received the socialistic policies which dramatically improved the lives of millions of Indians after independence. It all came down to this revolutionary struggle. This was a pivotal moment in Indian history. And it is a shame that it is barely remembered outside a small circle. It is a shame that Indians have forgotten about this mutiny, about this rebellion and everything that went along with it. 76 years have passed since this time. And many of the deeper questions that, that were raised by them still remain relevant. A question of dignity, a question of self-respect and the questions of independence raised by the mutineers, those demands raised by the mutineers, they still ring true today. And we can draw inspiration from them in our struggle ahead. Al-Salaam. <coughs>